is Kirstie Harlow, and I'm a senior here at Woodlawn High School, and this is my partner. I'm Gunnar Breda, and I am the secretary of the local Woodlawn FFA. And our product here today is You Click It, the quicker clicker. So what exactly is You Click It? Well, it basically is a small handheld device that umpires use in baseball and softball games. <coughs> the features include a game clock and a timer. The game clock is basically so the umpire knows the exact end time of the game. And the timer, timer is basically if there is a rain delay. Um, sometimes in tournaments, there's a time limit. They have to get so many games in in the day. Hour and 15, hour and 30 minutes. So they know exactly when the game stopped. The digital clock, so they know the exact time it is. Um, the ball strike count, the score in the innings. So everything is at his fingertips. He knows all of that information. Um, what I just handed out is a mock-up drawing of the clicker, and this is the receiver that would that the clicker would send the signal to, and then would put it on to the scoreboard. Some of the functions: it sends strikes balls out, beam score innings directly to the scoreboard. That's right, directly. We can program your scoreboard to work with our receiver to send it directly there. Some of the benefits. Well, the main benefit is that it eliminates the need for a scorekeeper. Um, people that are searching for scorekeepers, they don't have to pay them. Um, sometimes during the games, they're in dire need of a scorekeeper, so they settle for less, like a 12 or a 13 year old that doesn't really know what they're doing. They're on their phone the whole time, they're eating popcorn. So the information up there might not be accurate. So that leads to accuracy. So you can guarantee that the information on the scoreboard is accurate because it came right from the umpire. It's convenient. Everything is right there at his fingertips. He has all the information right there. Nothing complex. It's pretty simple. All right. And then uh, some of the production cost on our product. The remote is the shell is made out of plastic, and the shell would cost us roughly about five dollars to make and then you would have about fifteen dollars worth of electronics in it and we figured our labor would be at about twelve bucks an hour and that we could produce roughly twenty of these units per hour which would put the per unit cost of labor at sixty cents per unit which would make a total price of twenty dollars and sixty cents for the remote itself and then the receiver it, the shell of the receiver would be aluminum and that would cost about $20 to have made. And then it would have about $40 worth of electronics in it. And the labor would still be at $12 an hour. And we can make about eight of these units per hour. So that per unit cost would be $1.50. So the total price is $74.50 for the receiver to be produced. And then Who's going to buy our product? Local baseball fields would be an idea for them to have it. And then high schools, universities, and maybe down the line some major league teams would like it for the convenience. And then the cost to the buyer. The receiver and the remote combination would be about $150 to purchase. And the replacement remote would be about $50, and then the replacement receiver would be about $125. And so that profit we would make on that is on the receiver and remote combination, we would make a total of $54.90 off the combination for a unit we sell. And then just selling the remote singly, we will be making about $29.40. And then selling just the receiver, we're making about fifty dollars and fifty cents. Can you go back to the yeah, end? Yeah. Oh, you, uh, I'm a visual person, so I'm trying to put this together. So you're saying the initial receiver remote is 150, but say a lightning strike hits the scoreboard and whatever fries the whole system, you're going to pay more for the. Well, that would cause them to buy the remote with the, the remote and receiver combination. Is this everything to do with the scoreboard? 
Uh, no, it's not the school board. Well, it's just the receiver. receiver. Doesn't it have to connect to the... Yeah, it would plug into it, but I'm not sure if... I've not looked into if it would pry it out. I've not thought of the lightning strike. I, that was kind of where my question was going, too. It's, it's, uh, you were very specific in your labor costs and what you got per unit, but, uh, but you're giving them a break to buy a replacement piece, and I just kind of wonder what were you, what were you thinking in the? Um, why would you cut your margin on because somebody has to buy a replacement part as opposed to somebody buying it off the shelf? Dude? Well, I just thought maybe. Uh, Maybe they could buy a second one at the time as opposed to it being a replacement piece, right? <coughs> or a spare. I've not. Yeah, really. Right, yes. Okay. Okay. So there is currently a patent pending with an idea similar to ours, but it's not currently a prototype in production. So once ours is marketed and out in production, it would be the first of its kind. Some advantages would be it's very user friendly, it's available in any color. Um, the availability, um, once, you, once we get our product out there and booming, um, you can find it anywhere, it's very easy to find. Some disadvantages, <coughs> excuse me, like I said there is a patent pending ahead of ours so that is a big disadvantage, but that is not going to stop us from clicking our way to the top. Are you going to sell it like you? Right, we're going to sell in like sports stores, like Sports Authority. Um, as you can see, we already have a Facebook page. Um, we're already getting quite a bit of likes each day. People commenting, saying, wow, what a great idea, because they can really um, relate to our product and how well it would work. Right. Um. We have thought about getting some advertisement on like getting some banners made up and putting them up on fences at ball fields because you know, that's where it's meant to be so we would advertise it there. We thought maybe like sports magazines advertise it in that and, and now let's uh, talk green for a second. now. Our product is going to made out, be made out of some recycled material. We thought that would also be a great advertisement catch by saying the shell for the handheld receiver part will be made out of 100% recycled plastics. And then the aluminum shell for the receiver will be made out of a recycled aluminum. So Sharks, are you going to click it? Before I click it, <laughs> uh, when you say the patent is pending, um, surely there's there's software, the technology underneath the shell. Is that is that what you're actually patenting, or are you patenting the handheld device? Because uh, I'm only imagining that the the uh, the program, the software that gets this to talk to the scoreboard, right. that's where I suspect the patent is pending, you tell me. Right, um, we're, all the, we're also pending like the, the device, like the whole design, the idea, I mean someone has this, a similar idea, ours has more features, so it's kind of more advanced, but yes, I understand what you're talking about. I don't so, know what your question is, Tony, but when, when she said patent pending, she was that was somebody patent. else, yes. but so yes. you know when they're talking about you know here's here's why mine's slightly different. Um, you were very specific in addressing the hardware. Uh, I just I might have missed it, but I didn't hear anything about the software, the actual computer program that's, that's getting it to, to to talk to each other. That's what I'm, what I'm thinking about. Kind of. Piggyback and off the back of it. How how long ago did they apply for this, this patent? Uh, the patent was back in the nineties. It okay. was in like ninety nine, I think. Okay. So, do you have plans to? <laughs> yes, we do. Okay. 
That's a long time ago, and it's still pending. Right. So that's why, I mean, it is a disadvantage, but we're not worried about it at all. Okay. Um, also, let's make this nifty demonstration for the receiver. Uh, I got the drawing. We got to make a little something for me. I'm a hands-on person. I got the drawing, but you know, I'd like to actually feel it. It looks like it would be ergonomically designed to actually fit my hand. Yeah, I tried to make a model of it, and I tried to make a mold, and then I was going to like whittle it out of the mold, and then the mold kind of never set right and okay. crumbled. It was just a question, like I said, yeah. good with the receiver. I just want, I like playing stuff. <laughs> you know, right. I like to press some buttons, make it light up. Um, the other thing is, is, is what drives you guys to this product? It seems pretty personal, especially in the beginning. And you were very passionate about why this device is needed. Do you guys have personal experience with this? Well, me personally, I've played I've played softball since I was yay tall, so <laughs> I understand like the confusion with the the I'm the catcher, so the it's kind of hard for me if the information up there isn't correct. I'm like calling signs, and it's not accurate. Then I call the wrong sign if I you know, misinterpret what the, what the call was, so. Okay, uh, another question. Sorry, I don't mean to take from the other judges. Uh, if you guys are gearing this more towards the umpires, would it kind of behoove you guys to maybe partner with the sports association that actually teach you guys how to be umpires? Yeah, that would help market it, I guess. I mean, if you guys make it for the sports, I mean, you can advertise on the outside, of course. Right. But the people actually running the games need to know how to make it or how to work it. You know, right. you do a little training seminar, I mean, that's money right there. Yeah. Um, and then not to mention, you license it straight to them. Just an idea. Yeah. I, you have a lot of really good information on your cost right there. Um, was, is there a, a calculated number of items that you need to sell for a Did you have a break even point? Uh, really. No. What? So what? How do you know when you're successful? What? What does success mean to you? Making a profit. Okay. I had it broke down to how much we would make selling each unit for mm -hmm. the prices I had set, right. and yeah, profit we'd make on that. Okay. If you were to start over, let's say we go back four weeks ago and you um, are sold this product, what would you do differently in preparation for today? What do you wish you would have done? Um, more of the way of how we were going to, like he said, the software, let know more about how you are going to do the software to actually make it work. Okay. Any more questions from the Sharks? Thank you, guys.